I am definitely going to be looking that up now. Yeah. Well, I mean, time to shift our focus to Australia. And we spoke of Kirk McKenzie being the second highest run scorer in this test match. The highest run scorer is someone who has made a bit of a habit of scoring runs in tough conditions. Travis Head, the man with the moustache and the hero from both the World Test Championship final and the World Cup semi-final and final, has once again scored a counter-attacking ton in a very testing conditions. And he scored 119 of uh, 134 deliveries. And he's transforming Jared from this cult hero into someone Australia can rely on consistently. And he's carrying that insane form from 2023 into the new year. And it's quite the transformation, I'd say. So, Kurt McKenzie. <laughs> <laughs> he's, so, his top score is 28 in C20 cricket. Um, and that's, those numbers come over like three years. Like, it's not like he just had a bad run. It's like being consistent over a period of time. Um, anyway, sorry. Uh, Travis yeah. said, yeah, he's also good. Um, Travis <laughs> said, look, I think I, I always thought with Travis said that clearly Australia were very, very keen on him. And, and so he played in the innings in the Big Bash where he made 140-odd, I think. I can't remember what his score was, but it was a big, big T20 score. And Australia kind of went all in on him. And I was like, whoa, this guy can't play spin. And as we found out afterwards, couldn't play when the when right arms were coming around the wicket to him. Like he had so many deficiencies. And I think it does show you that Australia is maybe slightly better at, I think they're slightly better at well, maybe two or three different things when it comes to developing talent compared to other countries. Mm. One is they do back talent. So they were like, no, no, you can't play the innings he played in the Big Bash. I think he played a couple of other innings as well without being ridiculously talented. Another thing they 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 did was, is I think they made him vice captain early on as well and all sorts of yeah, stupid they things. Did. I remember yeah. that. In fact, I feel like they're still earmarking him as a future captain. Yeah, very, very possible. But mm. so he came in and then when he was dropped and he was, you know, he, he was terrible at a cup, against a couple of things. Um, they, you know, we see this with... Sri Lanka is maybe a really good example of this. If someone will come in and like, you can tell they've got talent and then they don't make runs for a little while. And then it's like seven years later, we see them again, right? Australia is much better off, uh, uh, much better at going, no, no, I think this, you know, Usman Khawaja, for all the talk about Usman Khawaja, no one would be talking up Usman Khawaja if he played nonstop test cricket all the way through his career because he had huge dips, right? Yeah. But also... Australia made him earn his way back in by making lots of runs, but then backed him when he came back in, right? Mm. And I feel like Travis had very different kind of cricketer, but they've done a similar thing with uh, where they, like they didn't, when he made runs against England at home in the Ashes, they didn't want to take him to India. And it's not, again, it's not that they thought he was a dud or anything, but they were like, we've well, just made runs at home against England. We're now going to take him to India and he's going to have to face Ashwin. Do we want him to be completely deflated by not being able to hit um, Ashwin? But then the other thing, is going well. Wh why don't we just let it lead, let him off the off the chain, essentially, and let him play the way he wants to play? And I think that's one thing that Australia does really well. And I think Travis Head is the success of the Australian system. And let's be honest, he comes out of the most rancid first class system in Australia. Apologies to everyone from South Australia, but you you all know it's true. Um, in fact, I had Tom Moffat on the other day, the uh, the Fika. Um, what is he, CEO of FICA, the Players Association on a podcast. It'll come out in the next couple of weeks. And I said, don't worry, Tom, I'm not going to ask you what the hell is going on with South Australian cricket for the last 20 <laughs> years. But, you know, uh, Travis Head probably didn't come out of the strongest one. So, again, that almost gives them an op opportunity to overlook him. Like, if you look at Callum Ferguson and Mark Cosgrove, they both – I thought Callum Ferguson did really well in one-day cricket for a little while and I thought should have been given more opportunities – uh, Mark Cosgrove, I think, again, proved that he was certainly international quality. Because they were in a rancid South Australian system, they kind of could have done that. They didn't do that with Travis Head. They decided that this was, they earmarked him as, as you said, a potential captain, but also more important than that, you know, someone who could make a difference. And then they helped him with his technical problems. But what's the thing that's really helped him? He's still got technical problems, but he just smashes it, right? Yeah. And so it's harder to corner him now than it was before. And, you know, he was... He was timid when he first came into Test cricket. He was timid and full of holes. He was basically, I don't know, separate one. The point being that that's what he was like. He, he just, you know, he didn't handle pressure particularly well. I don't think he understood his game particularly well. And on top of that, he had flaws within his game, right? And they've just backed him in so many different ways. And, and I do think, um, you know, we're seeing the, you know, them and, and you can go Mitchell 
Marsh as well, right? Of two yep. players that they have backed, that they have repeatedly brought back. Um, uh, you know, there was so much mocking of Mitchell Marsh for a long time. I don't think Travis had ever got to that because he kind of got dropped with the minute it looked like he was any good. Uh, sorry, he wasn't any good. Um, but I, I do think they're very good at going, no, 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 okay, he's in a bad run of form. He doesn't need to be in the side now. And that's really kind of what you should do with your players, right? There, I think there's this whole idea in cricket, and I suppose you could talk about lots of sports, but I think certainly non-team sports, so non franchisey sports, right? Of like, he needs to be great at 21 if he's going to be great at 31. And it's like, but not if he develops slower. Right? Not if he doesn't believe in himself. There are incredible cricketers who just take a long time. You know, uh, if you look at Ricky Ponting, he essentially was great in his peak batting age. And I think there's a few other cricketers like that. Dennis Amos, I think, might be another one. Hmm. They weren't particularly good beforehand. They weren't particularly good after, right? They were fine. But a lot of players need to find that period. And once they have that period, they absolutely explode. Um, and so when you're dropping people and selecting people you need to have that in mind it's one reason i like the fact that renshaw is still around right hmm. because they're like no renshaw clearly is an international quality batter we're probably not going to pick him automatically again until we're um we're sure that he's ready but we also don't want him to be out of the system and hmm. i think that's what a lot of smaller teams that's one thing they can learn from keep people around the system so that they are d still developing the same way but without having to face ashwin or you know mm. dale stain on, on a green one yeah i think that's a fantastic point and i mean australia have clearly kept the faith and liberated travis head and now he's repaying that faith and then some and i mean he's got a home ground done over here i mean south australia kid who's uh, scored a ton in adelaide and an important one